and we turn our attention to jobs. New numbers show workers are choosing to leave their jobs for bigger paychecks at the fastest rate in 17 years. The Labor Department says numbers say that 3.4 million Americans quit their jobs in April. That's twice the 1.7 million who were laid off from their jobs in April. Joining me now is Oxbow Advisors managing partner Ted Oakley. Ted, what does this mean for employers, the labor market, the overall economy going forward? Well, Dagan, they're having to pay up. I mean, that's been going on now for quite a few months, and it's getting worse because you have very few employees that have the ability to really go from some lower level jobs into the higher level jobs where these people are going to for more uh, for more money. Mitch, I want to raise this issue. At what point does this send wages through the roof? Since wages up, that is, it is. Um, a bigger concern for the economy and the overall market. Tomorrow in the jobs report, we're expected 2.8 percent average, average hourly earnings growth year over year. Not quite that 2.9 percent that seemed to spook the market. But at what point is this glass half empty rather than glass half full? I, I think we're there right now. Uh, you don't necessarily see it in the numbers because when you look at the jobs report, it's a national average. But what's happening right now is employers are paying up for employees and if they can't pass that price along to uh, the organization it's gonna the customer is gonna pay for it and, and we're starting to see an inflation but I'm curious about one thing I don't know if Ted could weigh in on sure. this which is that we have unemployment now at three point what is it eight point percent we haven't had right. that since 2000 but in 2000 wages were growing at three point nine percent wage growth at 2.8 if that's what it comes in on Friday that's hardly a booming wage growth Ted how does the market interpret the fact that we're not getting wages growing at the pace we've had in other recoveries hmm. well I think what's happening is that you know the companies haven't been willing to do it and and one of the things that you're going to see from our vantage point is that probably peaks this quarter or next quarter. We have a little bit different uh, look at where we are in the cycle, and in the cycle you always get this at the end of the cycle. But then wouldn't that be a problem? If we peak at around 2.9 percent, that's well below the wage growth we've seen in the past, and the Federal Reserve has been perplexed for several months, it's almost a couple of years now, that wage growth just isn't what it used to be. It isn't, but I think the reason why is because companies get away with it. I mean, we haven't been in, a, in an area where, if you look at the last 10 years, they've been able to keep those numbers low, and they haven't gotten into trouble with it yet. If that continues to be the same way, I think it'll just be the same, same look for the next one, two, or three years. Ted, in terms of the, well, let's talk about Wall Street. We're going to get a string of jobs numbers. We've got the ADP private payrolls, weekly jobless claims out uh, later this morning. This is going to be followed by that jobs report out for tomorrow. The expectation, just to hit it home, 195,000 jobs added last month, the unemployment rate holding steady at 3.8 percent. Again, despite the tariff worries, we have the markets uh, looking very optimistic this morning. Do you think that this will give markets, investors, uh, more to cheer about? Well, it could, Dagan. I think one of the bigger problems, though, will be the, the tariff situation tomorrow, whether they really come through with that. I think investors would look at that differently than they would what's going on in the employment market right now. Last jobs report, it was about two hours before last month's jobs report came out, President Trump tweeted that he was looking forward to seeing the unemployment numbers. And there were some people out there who said that he was telegraphing the jobs data, that it set such a dangerous precedent. Uh, Mitch and Morgan, I want to get your reaction to this, because again, now we're in the situation where people are going to be watching to see if President Trump tweets about it. If he doesn't tweet about it, then is that a bad sign? If he does tweet about it, is he giving too much away? Way. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a fair point. I think the president has shown that one of the ways he communicates to the world is through Twitter, and that's sort of wearing his emotions on his sleeve for better or for worse. And I think that, that it, clearly, if I was investing and looking at this tomorrow, I would be looking whether the president's going to tweet or not. I think that he's, I would, I would imagine he's likely going to step away from tweeting about jobs numbers well, the after Democrats, the reaction. Well, the Democrats lost their minds yeah. when he well, tweeted about it. As if the, yeah. the, the, it was, the, the, it was, he broke the law 
because he did that. But again, it does it does set up the expectation that people will be waiting to hear from him two hours before the jobs report comes out. And, and this, this is a statement and a question to you, Ted, which is the good news, bad news issue. Mm -hmm. So if the jobs number is good, does that mean the market's going to take it as a bad thing? And that's one of the things we're seeing. So the market may be hanging on the president's tweet for an indication of what the jobs report is, but they may not react the way you'd think they would react because there's a disconnect between Wall Street and Main Street at times. Hmm. Well, I, I can't speak for other people, but I know in our money management firm, we probably won't be buying based on the tweet. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I would say I would say that you know anything that's optimistic is good, regardless of who it comes from. And I think people will look at that and feel better about things this summer. And, and speaking of Twitter, and I wanted to bring, raise this with Adam because somebody was tweeting me this morning mm -hmm. saying, "Stop talking down the tariffs. <laughs> the president knows what he's doing. Stop pushing fake news." There's nothing that I've said that is fake. That the, the numbers that I've quoted are based on research from past steel tariffs that President Bush used, that it destroyed more jobs in other steel consuming industries than it, the entire steel industry employed at the time. That you've had, let's call Mid Continent Nail on the phone about the layoffs there. Let's call Lion, the locker maker, on the phone about the damage that the steel tariffs are doing to their business. Let's call Harley Davidson. Let's call every single auto manufacturer who's worried about prices going up and job losses here in the U.S. Let's call the farmers. Well, the, the Des Moines Register was about two weeks ago. Uh, front page had an article uh, that talked about the impact in Iowa could be $600 million to Iowa farmers when the Chinese do impose their tariffs. So what the Chinese Chinese are going to do is target places where President Trump was incredibly popular during the presidential election, and it's designed to have that kind of negative impact on his base. But keep in mind the General Motors letter about mm -hmm. tariffs. I mean, the president won Michigan, but only by a few thousand votes. And those people might be connected to the auto industry. They may not like these tariffs. And again, you, the retaliatory, it, it's the U.S. and then the retaliation, but to say that it's fake news, well, that's poppycock. Ted Oakley, <laughs> thank you so much.